right. Tom Cruise dies. Stoplight Spoilers is coming to you. Bringing you spoilers and movie reviews. With Jake and Isaiah as your hosts as they're driving home. Wow. Got that out of the way. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way right up front. Just so you know, going into this movie, if you don't know anything about history, about drug cartels. I didn't know he died. No. I'm glad nobody told me before I watched the movie, though. Cause then, I mean, yeah, I think this one I could have still been okay with. Cause it just made sense. Right. I don't have a problem with him dying. Me either. I mean, I wanted a happy ending for I'm glad his family didn't die. That's happy yeah. enough. Well, yeah, she had a very successful career at KFC. I think it was something else. It was, it was something yeah, else, but it was something like that. Right. But uh, that works. I mean, she's still rocking them diamonds on that wrist. Yeah, she was. That's pretty good. So tonight, if you haven't picked up on it, we talked about Tom Cruise. Uh, we watched American Made. It's yes. pretty decent. I did enjoy it. I did. I, I did. It was very entertaining. Had some decent comedic relief, which could have been Hollywood. It could have been the genuine character. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll never know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I liked it. Going into it, I didn't expect a whole lot just because not necessarily a Tom Cruise hater, per se. But a lot of the movies he tends to be in, for some reason, they don't do very well. In my was this, who is it that Nick likes? Nick likes Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. Yeah. He doesn't like Tom Cruise. Is yeah. that? Yeah, oh. it's kind of like a... I'm surprised he didn't bail this week, then. No, but he liked the movie, Nick. He, since you brought that up, Nick did actually say you liked the movie. And uh, even though it was an R-rated movie, and some of the descriptions of it were very vague, uh, I think it's kind of cool that he actually made it. Right. So, and it was pretty good. I mean, Trooper. there are a couple very, very super fast sex scenes that are don't show anything. They're just borderline funny. Well, one of them is to me, anyway. But, uh, anyway, on to the movie. Tom Cruise is a pilot for, for a major airline. We'll just call it Delta. TWA. Yeah, TWA. It was a Delta. It so, uh, major airline. And he flew. Has a successful career. The Very youngest successful. pilot they've ever hired. Yeah. So he's done really well for himself. He's Has everything good. going for him. Oh, and I just want to let you guys know... Anytime that you have turbulence on an aircraft, that's actually not real turbulence. It's, <laughs> it's the actually pilot. Tom Cruise in the cockpit. Yeah, it's Tom Cruise Just in the cockpit. Just screwing with everybody. Yeah, they take it off all the pilot and jam it around a little bit and wake cool. everybody up and say, No, I'm sorry, this is your captain speaking. We're having a bit of turbulence. And it's actually them just mucking with the controls. But uh, I like to think that. It is kind of funny. They do that all the time when you all fly the time. in Reno. Every, every, yeah, every When you fly. land in Reno. One time, it was so bad. We were like, it felt like we were just about to touch down. They did that so bad. They did that thing where they jerked the, the steering wheel. Yeah. Whatever you call that thing. I don't know what you call it. That they had to actually take back off, and we had to fly up and circle back around. Wow. It took like 35 minutes or something to get, like. To get back up? Get back in order. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. It was crazy. Wow. Because I felt like we were so close to like touching, and then a side wind got us and pushed us over, and he had to like floor it and take back off. I like that he floors it with a stick. <laughs> I like the concept there. Well, I mean, no, nah, it makes sense. I he jams it. He <laughs> jams it. Um, sure. uh, anyway, so basic plot: Tom Cruise is an American pilot, flies for a major airline. And you see him doing something that looks kind of shady, like loading stuff into his personal bag. Yeah, oh, that's right. Thank you for reminding me. He is, he smuggles out. Cuban cigars. Pretty much completely innocuous. Like, yeah. there's just tobacco that's non-taxed, essentially, is what's happening there. And uh, he gets on the CIA's radar, but they're like, you, you could, we could benefit from you. Right. So they quote-unquote hire him it seems like a stretch to hire him like he has no other i mean what he was well that's because that's why he wasn't actually cia they just funded his shenanigans if you will yeah so the cia sets him up gets him a a plane 
and uh, super nice plane. Apparently. Super nice plane, fastest twin dual engine. prop twin engine plane in existence in the seventy eight in the seventies. And uh, so he starts working for the CIA, taking pictures. Taking pictures. That's the main reconnaissance. Thing. We call it reconnaissance photos or reconnaissance and, or intel or something. He's like, so it takes pictures. <laughs> uh, that was a funny one. I butchered it, but it was funny in the movie. <laughs> Don't take our word for it. It really was funny. Um, what else? Do you have another agenda or is he just taking pictures initially? Um, Initially, he's literally just taking photographs. But then he gets approached later on by oh, Pablo Escobar and the other two It was more people. than just the photographs. He was also picking up and dropping off the intel from... Oh, that's right. Homeboy. I don't remember which one that was, but he was in the... Uh, was it Columbia, right? Was yeah. Was that Columbia? I think he uh, like one of the military. Yeah, was yeah. selling information from Colombia to the United States. So he was picking up, dropping off. So he's dropping off money while picking up intel and uh, taking photographs with the plane purchased by the CIA. Getting Under, shot at. Yeah, getting shot at, but still getting. And he also at this point doesn't. He hasn't told his family. Like he hasn't told oh, yeah, his wife. Good point. Totally secretive. He changes into his. Old work attires, TWA outfit, every time he goes home. Yeah. Just to give up the appearance. So she thinks he's a pilot still. And then he gets approached by Pablo Escobar and the other two fellows. Because I can't remember their names. Of that major drug cartel. Yeah. I remember those. I remember Pablo Escobar because I just know the name from history. But, uh, yeah, the other two guys. Gets approached, starts running cocaine. And they're little at this point. They're they're small. Yeah, they're businessmen is what he called them. Three businessmen. He was trying to get gas. I was trying to remember how he. Yeah, they. And they uh, well, they locked, locked it on. I assume he used to get gas there. Yeah. So he just thought I'd get gas and this time. They were like, nope, we want to talk to you. Yeah, let's go for a ride. Goes, sits down, talks to the cartel, winds up delivering drugs for them. Now. At $2,000 a kilo. $2,000 a kilo, which is every 2.2 pounds, and he was running 1,500 kilos. That's just. Right? I on wonder some of, some of the stuff. He's running out of space to put money. Like, that right. adds yeah, up quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it added up really quick. The dude was loaded with cash. So, I want to talk about that runway. At the end of the runway in Mexico. With this first shipment. Yeah, this is yeah. the very first time. They, they were like, this is your dirt runway. This is where you're going to have to land and take off. No problem landing. The takeoff, however, when you start loading up a bunch of weight, which happened to be drugs, at the end of the runway, there's a bunch of trees with crosses and rosaries and flowers <laughs> and things. I like where this conversation is at. That were, right. that were, you know, in remembrance of all the pilots that have died. Right. Trying to do this for these these gentlemen. I call them gentlemen. <laughs> no, they're awful individuals. And uh, so he's like, yeah, I can do it. So he does it. Well, let's back up a few seconds. They don't even believe that he can do it because they start taking they, oh, bets. Oh, yeah, they start He's taking bets to. on it. Yeah, so they actually take bets on whether or not the like, crazy gringo will get it Can we try to set him up for some, some success? Why would you want all, like, isn't that going to ruin some of your product if he wrecks the plane? Oh, yeah, they, yeah, apparently they didn't care. They're sitting on so much. Why I do guess. they care at the moment? I guess. Can't move it. So anyway, well, needless to say, he barely makes it. Trims the trees, everything with the plane, according right. to the movie. Gets away. Now, we'll fast forward a lot. He does this for a while and has lots of money. Lots of money. It escalates. And winds up getting caught, lives in Louisiana. His CIA contact says to him... He got caught while he was in... Correct. Well, I don't know where he's at. We'll Somewhere call it south Mexico. of the border. Yeah. And uh, got thrown in... in up in jail. in jail. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, no, I think they're remodeling it, I oh, would assume. Okay. I didn't know that it was enclosed. Yeah. I'd assume, because normally they buy a previous corner, or I mean a perpendicular corner. Yeah. But they're doing it in a real big hurry, so I assume they're going to rebuild there. But they're taking out the pumps and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh... Hashtag gas station talk. And, uh... 
so he talks to a CIA guy, comes gets him out of jail, and he says, you need to go get your family because the DEA is about to bust in and rock your world. So he gets his family from Louisiana, moves up to Arkansas to 2,000 acres with his own private airstrip, still working for the CIA, gifted to him by the CIA. Right. And then that's when the money really right. starts pouring in because he gets a crew of other pilots and other planes. And fast forward again, they start then again getting on the DEA's radar, DEA's radar, and the DEA has just jets because it's a, oh, to yeah, keep yeah, up yeah. with him. This is the I was thinking about the FBI, but yeah. we're talking. Well, about I'm just going to this point because I really was entertained by the idea that the DEA were chasing them down with jets that were really fast. Well, the the dual prop planes that they were flying, they can fly extremely slow. So they would just fly slow until the jets fuel. would run out of fuel. <laughs> and then they'd have to turn back. And then they're like, all right, let's go on our business. And that was pretty fun to me. But they start getting on everybody's radar. FBI, CIA, local police, state police, whatever. They have money in every like, bank. Every bank. Well, the whole town is every, just a whole bunch of institutions, financial institutions, just to launder his money. And he's got it buried out back. He's got it in the shed. He's got it in suitcases Just at the everywhere. airport. There's he's got, like, he goes to the bathroom, and then there's suitcases in the bathroom full of money. You know, he just, it's everywhere. He can't. He can't launder it fast enough. Can't launder it. He has nothing to do. They have everything they need. They have a nice house. Family's growing. They got and a couple nice cars. Bubba comes into the picture. Oh, my gosh. Her brother. Brother-in-law, Bubba. He looked like he was strung out from the beginning, but they never showed him doing drugs. <laughs> he was an interesting individual. Why couldn't they just, like... I mean, obviously, they can't write him out of the story because it was, like, it was, supposed to be based on a true story, but... Yeah. She should have sent him on his way, though. Right, I don't know. Right. It's family. It's hard to do that. But... So, they gave him a job. Get, sweeping some floors. Yeah. Just to give him some money. Yeah. Make him work a little bit for it. He don't found wanna, the money. Don't want to... Yeah, he did. They, Went and bought a gremlin! Like, uh, it would fit his character so hard. side note, they should probably do a little bit better job of concealing it. Like, it, from people that don't know what's happening. Let's talk about how big he got at that one bank in trust. They were, he goes in and they're doing some construction and they're making an auxiliary vault. Yeah. And he goes, oh, you guys are making me more space. And they're like, uh, no, we're actually giving you the main vault. And this is for all of our other, everyone else at the customer here gets this little tiny vault. I do love, I know you already talked about it, but I love how the town turned into like seven banks. Yeah, they like, were just, I mean, that's why you got it on FBI's radar. Right, there's so much money in this town. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense to have that much money. No. And, uh, you know, I mean, we are talking about, just to, to set the scene in case we didn't cover it, it started in 78, and he went all the way up to about 86. So, he wasn't he was only in the business for eight years. Or millions upon millions upon millions. Yeah, he had dollars. tons of money. Like, it was ridiculous. All over the place. Yeah, it was super fun. But anyway, so... Br- Bubba buys a gremlin. <sighs> and it's a nice one. Like, it looks good. Hitting the... Bumping it, whatever he could back in the 80s. Yeah. And he gets stupid. Yeah, I mean, he was stupid anyway. I mean, but he does something really stupid. He yeah. starts flashing. What, what was he going into? That was that, that was our diner, right? I feel like he didn't want to, like he... Uh, was nervous to leave in the car? Nervous to leave in the car. Perhaps. So That's he's going into the diner with a suitcase full of cash. Hey, he, if you're going to walk into somewhere with a suitcase full of cash, at least make sure all the bills are in there. They the were just cave. painting a picture of how dumb the brother was, I think. You know what uh, I mean? So the local, the local, okay, so the local deputy, sheriff, the whatever. one law enforcement guy that lived in this town was all fine with, uh, with uh, him being there. Tom Cruise's character. I forgot his name. But, because he would send, he sent him, you know, uh, Season tickets for uh, oh, Razorbacks. I didn't put that together. Was but, it the Razorbacks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it was. So he sent him t- season tickets to the game, and he's like, "Oh, he's fine. He, he does a lot for the town." Yeah, but I mean, he wasn't causing any problems. He's just bringing a lot of really bad drugs into the U.S. So I mean, essentially, it was causing problems. But hey, look at there. Trying to catch folks, maybe. Um. 
So, anyway, progressing the story. He gets arrested, gets thrown in jail. The Mexican cartel people, they find out about it. Tom Cruise is like, I'll take care of it. I'll Tom, take care of it. Like, no, we got you, boo. No, no, we'll, we'll take care of it. See, si, see, si, we'll take care of it. Yeah, that was me being nice. Um, anyway. And they, they decide well, to take care of it. I well, mean, actually, Tom Cruise takes care of it. He gets him, gets him a whole big old fat stack of cash. Get gives him, you know, here's your gremlin. I need you to just leave. Here's and the guy couldn't get the picture. tickets. Yeah, he like, still is like, I'm going to give you an address, and you send me money every week. Every week, or on the regular. And so Tom Cruise is thinking, you know, I'm doing what I can for my brother-in-law. You and know, I'm handling the situation. He realizes this isn't going to work. And his brother-in-law is a douchey. Because of how douchey his brother-in-law is. And kaboom. Kaboom. Kaboom, they gremlin. Mexicans no blew him up. Right in front of Tom. So that was uh, that was an interesting bit of the story. Which, we never saw any of the backlash from the sister. No questions on anything. So that was interesting. I'm surprised there was nothing that came about there. At all. I it didn't... I wonder if there's a deleted scene out there. I don't know. So fast forward. I, I, there's probably some things that we'll fill in in a minute. But now he's been in a lot of trouble. He's on everyone's radar. Gets arrested by literally everyone. ATF. FBI. DEA. DEA. Uh, uh, state police. State, yeah. And then one more. I feel like there's five different agencies. They're all bust him at the same stinking time. Which was kind of comical. When they're trying to clean up the warehouse. Yeah. Or the hangar. So, take him in. The district attorney, something to that extent. She's like, oh, we're gonna, we're never going to let you go. You're going to spend the next thousand years in prison. He's like, I really don't want to do that. And so she gets a call from the mayor. Clinton. Yeah. Which I think was comical. Not sure how that, if that was true, but that was funny. Um, well, I assume it's part of it. Why would they throw that in there? I don't know. I just think it's really interesting that Clinton had something to do with it. I mean... Anyway. It's politics. It's politics. And so he gets off for free. Nothing happens. Sort of. Then he goes to court. Yeah, you're right. Then he goes to court and... Goes to court? No. You're missing the whole... As soon as he walks out... He's forced into another Oh, car. that's right. No, no, I jumped the gun. You're right. My bad, my bad, my bad. I'm so curious to how this movie was in your head. <laughs> wow. I'm just kidding. I just got across. But you, you, he gets forced into ahead. another car, gets driven to the White House, essentially. I don't know uh, where were they at. They were in Arkansas. So they probably got on a plane, I assume, somewhere. <laughs> they did. Um, got into a plane, flew... Went to the White House, got into a meeting with a like a huge general, and who's the other guy? Uh, we'll from Columbia or one of those places. Anyway, essentially, Across us. they came down to is they want to catch these guys in the act and take down the cartel, right? Is that? Yep. So they come up with this plan. To keep it going for a while. And they gave him a really huge... Well, the reason why he needs the huge plane, though, is they want him to move a really massive amount. So he's like, all right, I'm going to go home. I'm going to figure out how to do it, and I'll be back. Then that's when he got arrested. Then that's when they were like, took him to D.C. and said, hey, we want you to do this for us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So essentially they say, just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. And we're going to give you a bigger plane. Okay. The funny noise. There's no fluid. Uh, where do we go from there? Um, he goes down. Him and another pilot in this big giant plane. Oh yeah. And to they, take reconnaissance photos they have pictures, of cameras forty one. And they assure him that their photos will be confidential, they're not gonna release them. They just need it to capture or whatever. Yeah. Uh so he does this. He moves the shipment, gets the pictures, sitting at home on the couch after he gets back. And on the freaking news. On the news. There's Tom Cruise's face. Because they released the photos. With the entire cartel. Yeah. So now he thinks, oh, God, we're screwed. 
and he winds up going, like, getting in trouble. Now, what? This, he, I wasn't clear about. Why did he get in trouble after that? Like, Well, because he's in the pictures, and they didn't have his back. Oh, so they, they didn't just, say you were working for him. Burned yeah. him. At yeah, that yeah, point. they burned him oh. essentially. So he yeah, goes, "It's busted. okay, honey. You're gonna take all the jewelry, everything you can go. I you're like how move, move to Louisiana. I thought I'd hate. Yeah, that. you're gonna move to Louisiana. I'm gonna go to prison, so that it looks like I just got busted, just like they did. I'm gonna go to prison. It also keeps him a little safer. That is, as long as they don't have people in the same prison." Yeah. I assume that's also another benefit, is possibly. But like, he's just not worried about it. He's like, I'll go to prison and I'll be safe, and I'll I'll do a little bit of time, ten years, and I'll be out. Then they let him off with only a thousand hours of com- community service. Yes, and that's ultimately what gets to him in the end. Do you see all these? There's somebody sign the road right here. Yeah. Are you home for that? No. Goodness. Silly people. That was Heather when she's leaving. <laughs> I'm so sick of the winter. Where for key is running all the like mine was. It is. I checked. Not really. Um. <laughs> okay, so they burned him. He ends up getting his community service hours. And he's just trying to stay safe. He Every time he starts the car, he's, like, super concerned. He's about to blow up. He tells everyone around him, like, be cautious. I'm starting the car. Will you back up? <laughs> it looks like a, uh, a, a really, really silly, silly person. person. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, staying in different hotels all the time. But the problem is his community service is always at the same place at the same time. So he can't ever change that. He can only change where he sleeps at night, and that's what ultimately got to him. Is his community service? They caught up to him there, machine gunned him down in his car. Murder. Yep. And that was it. I mean, that's, that's pretty, pretty much, pretty much the end of the movie. His first sandler got a promotion. Uh, a plane went down, and that's what essentially Ultimate, led to yeah. blew up the case that. There's this huge scandal, but with Iran. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny is I laugh about it, but like this stuff is serious. It and is it's extremely happening serious. now. It happens sure, now. Yep, yep, like, yep. The wool sure. is pulled so far over our eyes, and like we don't know who's coming or going. Like it is such a mess. But hashtag stoplight conspiracies. That was fun. It was interesting. Do you have any qualms with the film? There was a few scenes with Tom Cruise. Like, he supposedly the character lost a tooth in a fight. And his wife's like, You look, what's your tooth? And it, uh, at first it looked kind of to be just a black cap to cover his tooth. Yeah. But then there was one scene where Tom Cruise puts his tongue through the hole. And the tooth. And I was like, what the world? And then later on in the movie, I actually saw Tom Cruise and it appeared that he had every one of his teeth. There was no hole. So I don't know what the dentistry was at that point in time. I don't know where we were at with dentistry. Yeah, but I don't see that actually being a thing. No, I don't But either. possibly. I just feel like it was some sort of do you think it's, issue. Do it's CGI? Do you think it's CGI? Maybe. I just don't know how it looks. Where he stuck his tooth his, through it? Where he stuck his tongue, tongue through it? it? Maybe, but... What a funny thing to CGI. Like, if they did really, like, let's have him stick his tongue through his tooth. To make it look more real. That would be a fun thing to do. But even did. so, what if Tom actually was like, you know, that tooth's been bothering me anyway, I'll pull it out. <laughs> no. It's like, I really gave up a tooth for this role. I don't know. I feel like it's people big, have done stuff. A big thing to give up. Yeah, like, I feel like it would be too. But people have done crazy stuff. Like, like Jim Jim Carrey, for example, when he did the one thing that was a broken tooth. They're like, don't fix your tooth until after this movie is over. Which movie are we referring to? Dumb and Dumber. Oh, okay. His tooth literally was broken. Oh, They're like, do not movie. fix your tooth. It's one of my favorites. We love it. We love your tooth being broken. Please don't fix it. 
Like, and so he didn't fix his tooth until after the movie facts. was done. Yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, until after the movie was done filming. Then he has teeth fixed. Which uh, I find very entertaining. The qualms. Do I have any issues with the movie? Uh, one thing I didn't like about it, since I can't really think of any super drawbacks, yeah. is it was a late 70s, early 80s movie. And it felt like late 70s, early 80s movie. They did a few touches that I really liked, like Just in the... Uh, the opening cinematic? Whatever that Universal? company is. Yeah. Was it Universal? Oh, yeah. So they used the old Universal. Yeah. And then at the end... Well, it started as new, and then it changed right. into old. In the end, the credits, too, like the coloring the and everything... Color, everything just, felt super 80s. Just felt, period. Like and then it. once they got done with the initial credits, then they went to traditional right. 2017 right. credits. But no, everything like even it just felt even like the a, cinematography felt oldish. But it wasn't like the quality was great. The quality was there. Yeah. It just had that. But kind of like uh, if you guys have seen Argo, Argo kind of did a really good job with it as well. This one just went a step further, made it feel even more genuine. Because Argo with Ben Affleck was set back then. Yeah. And uh, it was a big deal. A lot of secret stuff going on, and. The way they did that and handled it, it felt there was a lot of moments in it. And it, it kind of felt period, even though we were watching it modern. Right. Yeah. This they one. They did do a very good job with that. This one definitely went further than Argo, but at the same time, was it? It didn't feel cheesy. No, I don't. I, I didn't get felt, that at all. It no. just felt like they recorded it at that time with yeah. kind of like. Like, the oh, coloring and stuff just felt like the... Yeah. It was One thing we and, left out was the... His, uh... What do you call these people that record videos on the motorcycle helmets? And I'm on YouTube. GoPro? Oh, moto... Oh. Vloggers. Vloggers. So... <laughs> like, where are we going Tom Cruise this? is a vlogger in the 80s. He has his VHS he, recorder. Did other people these, do this? Is he I, the first vlogger? No, I don't know, but he recorded all huh. these things about all this information, supposedly. Now, I want to know if that actually exists, if I can go watch this. Like, I would like to see the actual person, if these tapes exist, or if it's... Because Just essentially, artistic freedom. Man. The way they did it in the movie is, let's say, the original character back in the 80s recorded all these tapes... They got them, found them, watched them. I was like, Tom Cruise, we need you to do these parts on film. Right. And we're going to date it and make it look really old. And it, like, it looked fantastic. And, okay, let's give Tom Cruise his props. Because sometimes I really have issues with him. Sometimes I don't like him in movies just because he's just an, an odd duck. And, it, like, The Mummy, for example, wasn't that great of a movie. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. This one, I never got lost I didn't all. have a Tom Cruise issue. I didn't no. in, in it, any way in this movie. I think he did. A, I think he did a fantastic job. I think he did well with the character. It didn't feel like a movie about Tom Cruise. It felt like a movie about the character Tom Cruise. Was I wanting, agree totally. It's, which was really good. He did it well. I give them their props for that. Uh, right now, I'm. I mean, really, it's hard for me to take much away from it. So. Entertainment-wise, I'm up there. I feel like I'm like a nine, just because I was very entertained by the movie. Wow, that's pretty good. I mean, it's really good. But I was just was really entertained. There was you raise a good point moment. because I was just gonna say my default answer of an eight, but I don't have any reason to take away really much. But I don't think it's a ten. No, it's because it's not perfect. Because it's not a movie I'd want to repeat. But let's okay. So going off the first initial watch. It's a high nine for me. Okay. Repeat watch, it definitely drops considerably because it's not a movie that I really need to watch again because it's not something that I, was... I think it holds more than... Uh, what did we watch that I just couldn't... Something like Detroit, probably. I just couldn't watch that again. No, this, this one's better. Because it had comedic yeah. elements to it yeah. and stuff. This like one it. was more like life instead of just hatred. Right. Because there was a lot of hatred in Detroit. This is, there's fun aspects to this movie. Yes, like, there were. Just... He mooned his family a lot. Those were funny uh, Tom Cruise's butt. Mm. You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag that. Tom Cruise's butt. Um, but... Hashtag butt though. But... That butt dough. Yeah. I will... I'll just go ahead and follow you. I'll be a follower. I'll say a nine. 
Green. Go it watch it. It was good. Yeah, it was good. I mean, you know it's an R movie going into it, so if you're language sensitive. If you sensitive. have Tuesday nights, it's definitely worth a green light. I would say it's a green light any night, but yeah, it's good. Tuesday, $5 Tuesday is where it's at. That works well. And uh, <laughs> Friday, $2 Friday. Oh, that MLP, though. If we go. We, if we go, we can call it the special brownie cast. That'll be fun. But, uh, I always say it wrong. Next week. Next week. Yeah. It looks like Blade Runner? Or Flatliners. Or Or Flatliners. We'll see. We'll let you guys know. Because I'm sure we'll be recording. (laughs) Yep. Next time we record, you'll know. But, uh, I mean, that's it for me. I'd say go watch it. I enjoyed it. I laughed out loud. As well as a lot of the other theater. Like, there was... Numerous patrons to the movie that actually watched. It was done well. It was. It was very entertaining. It was good. Go watch it. All right, well, until next week, this is Jake. This is Isaiah. I'm out. See ya. I love you. Hashtag sponsor us.